hate cooking where you see cooking from my point of view. Before we get started, take a quick second and hit that subscribe button in YouTube so you never miss an episode of POV Italian Cooking. So this weekend I sat down and I was looking over the past episodes that I've recorded, trying to think what can I do now. You know, it's not like there's any shortage of Italian dishes, but I was just kind of trying to get some ideas. And then I noticed that I've never recorded chicken piccata. Well, chicken piccata is something I've made for my family probably a dozen times. So I thought, I need to get that on film. So today we're making a very traditional chicken piccata. Now, I'm going to warn you, I screwed it up at one point. I messed up one thing. And I looked at my wife and said, I'm done. I made a rookie mistake and I don't want this to be on video. I don't want to show this. And she reminded me, she's like, hey, you always say that you put all your mistakes, you, you include your mistakes, which I always have. And so I thought, you know what, you're right. And I'm going to tell you right now what the mistake was. I like with my chicken piccata for the, the sauce to almost be a gravy. So after I take out all my chicken, I put in a little bit of butter, a little bit of flour and make a roux. Well, I had so much chicken that once I, I made my roux and I put in my uh, chicken stock and my white wine, I thought I put in too much white wine and, and I wanted it to be thicker, so I put in more flour. Well, when you do that, you have a lot of liquid and you put in flour, it clumps. If I would have put in more flour when I'm making my roux, it wouldn't have been a problem, but it clumped. I ended up, I kept stirring it, kept stirring it. I got most of the lumps to break up. It, from a it didn't really affect the taste. I mean, it still tasted great. It was more of a visual thing, and it was a huge rookie mistake. Um, I'm not a chef. I'm allowed to make those. I was hungry. I'd had about, oh, two and a half glasses of wine. Uh, I know better. But at any rate, let's take a look at the ingredients for our chicken piccata. What we have, of course, is we have some flour. Uh, just regular all-purpose flour. We're going to use that for dredging. About a tablespoon of flour that we're gonna use when we make our sauce, when we, the gravy, for lack of a better way of putting it. Oh, a quarter cup, give or take, of capers. Um, these are the capers in brine, you rinse them. Then I have six tablespoons of butter and divided to three tablespoons. I've got a generous half cup of white wine, a generous half cup of uh, low salt chicken stock, and two lemons that we're gonna juice. As always, salt and pepper to taste, and a nice glass of red. That makes the whole cooking experience that much better. So let me rearrange some stuff here, and we're going to get started on our chicken. Oh yeah, the one ingredient. Again, tradition. We always forget an ingredient, but I just remembered. If you're going to make chicken piccata, you've got to have chicken. We don't have chicken here. So I do have the chicken breasts off the side. I just didn't put them in the shop. All right. Let me move things around. We'll get started. So in the last scene, I mentioned that, you know, we always have the tradition of forgetting an ingredient. And I'm so proud of myself that I remembered the, uh, the one ingredient that I forgot. When we ended that shot, I thought, oh yeah, I forgot yet another ingredient. Olive oil, which you'll see when we uh, move to the stove. So what I've got here, I've got some chicken breasts and I've went ahead and trimmed the fat off these chicken breasts. Just your standard skinless boneless chicken breast now what I want to do with that these things are so thick that it would take forever quite honestly it would take way too long to uh, cook this to make our chicken piccata we're gonna pound this down I've got my for lack of a better term my, my meat hammer um, and I always use the side that's got the little divots and the way you pound a chicken breast is you start in the middle and then you kind of work your way out and you use a pretty good bit of force. Let me show you. And you can see it's starting to spread out a little bit. So what we'll do is work our way out. And the only reason I'm using the plastic is it just keeps the, the uh, chicken juice from splattering all over the place. It's more for sanitary reasons than anything. Every now and then I like to... Uh, Kind of open the plastic here, kind of reset. You can see here it's still a little bit thick through the middle. What you want, your goal is to get the chicken a consistent thickness. Yes, this does tenderize it, 
But if you get it a, a, a consistent thickness clear through, then your cooking time on the chicken, on all your chicken is the same as well. Don't just hammer on one side, flip your chicken and beat it up on the other side as well. I like to cook this on days I've had a bad day and then, you know, I think about people who ruined the day for me as I smack the tar out of this chicken. All right, for me, this is good enough. That's a big, that chicken breast got big. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this for the other two chicken breasts here that I have. And once I've got these bad boys pounded out the way I want them, and we'll come back and look at our next step. I got all three of my chicken breasts pounded out. You can see we've got some good sized pieces of chicken here. So now all I want to do with this chicken, you just want to make, cut them into manageable pieces just so, you know, you can kind of, makes it easier to, to handle them when you're over at your frying pan, uh, browning this chicken. I like to have a, you know, pieces that you can kind of serve up different sizes. That way, tomorrow when you have leftovers, if you want to make a sandwich, that's ah, probably the right size for a sandwich or you'll find a piece. You're gonna take some for lunch, yeah, grab a piece. But that's just what I like to do. Got my chicken cut up. Now what I'm gonna do here is I am going to lay this out like so, and I'm just gonna salt and pepper both sides. Now before I do that, I'm going to wash my hands here real quick. Sterile hands. So I'm gonna salt and pepper these, gonna lightly salt them. You don't need a lot of salt because your capers are gonna have, add a lot of salt to this dish already. All right, now that I've got both hands, both hands, ah, now that I've got both sides salt and peppered, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna dredge these in flour. Now when I dredge them, I'm not gonna worry too much about getting off the excess. You'll see some people are like, oh, you gotta shake off all the excess. That's not what I like to do. I like my, my, uh, my gravy, my sauce to have a little bit of body to it. I like it to be a little thicker, almost like a gravy. And so having a little bit of extra flour, little, you know, when I, when I brown this on each side, it's gonna leave a little bit of extra brown pieces in the bottom of the pan. And that's fine with me because you'll see at the end of the cooking process, when we make the gravy, it will give it a little more body, make it a little thicker. As fun as this is to watch me dredge this in flour, I am going to break away and get this finished up. And when I get this dredging done, in the next shot, we will be at the stove starting to cook. I'm set up over my stove. I've got the heat on. We're going to start by putting in our three tablespoons of butter. And we're going to add some olive oil. Probably about all oh, three or four tablespoons of olive oil. We're just going to eyeball that. I'm gonna get our butter melting here. So while my butter's melting, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my chicken. And I'm not gonna try to cook all this chicken at once. We're gonna leave a little bit of space here in between my pieces. What I wanna do is get this chicken done clear through. Once I get my pan up to heat, I'm probably gonna cook these three or four minutes each side. Right now, I don't even have my butter melted, so it's probably gonna be four minutes. Hey, that's hot. Don't grab the pan with your hand. Just a nice little cooking tip there for you. So what I'm gonna do is get this chicken browned on one side. Three or four minutes, and it should be browned on one side, and then we'll flip it. My chicken's been cooking away for three minutes. Ooh, it's got a nice brown to it. I'm gonna turn the heat down just while I get these pieces out. Nice, this, look at the collar. That's exactly what you wanna see. Love it, love it, love it. Now we're gonna get our second batch in. I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of the butter. Actually, you know what, I'm not in this batch, but it's gonna take one more batch to cook all this chicken. So again, three minutes each side. I'm gonna keep getting through this. Uh, when all the chicken's done, then we'll be back. 
My last batch of chicken just finished up. I went ahead and put on my splatter guard because I'm kind of cooking over high heat here. And it was a splashing everywhere. Let me get the splatter guard out of the way. We don't need that anymore. I've got my heat turned down low just for a second here. Get our chicken out. Now you're going to see here in the bottom of the pan I got some nice brown bits. It's exactly what you want. There's little flavor bits down here in the bottom of our pan. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my remaining two tablespoons of butter, get those in the pan. I'm going to take my flour. This is a, around a tablespoon of flour, give or take. We're just going to kind of sprinkle that in. We're going to make a little roux. Between this and the bits and pieces in the bottom of the pan, uh, this will thicken up real nice. All right, stir that around. Now I have a generous half cup of white wine, a generous half cup of chicken stock in the pan. I'm going to turn my heat back up to medium. I'm going to stir this all around for a minute or two here. While we're waiting for this to simmer, I have two lemons over here. See how much juice we get. Oh, perfect. There's one lemon half. Probably only going to use three halves. I don't know if I'll use. Ah, heck, what was that? We've got a lot of chicken here. If you are making this at home, I would recommend stopping at two chicken breasts um, because when you pound them out, that's a lot. But I'm got since I've got three chicken breasts here, I'm probably going to put a splash more of my um, broth, my chicken stock in here, just because I have so much chicken. And a splash more of my white wine. And I'm probably gonna go with another little tablespoon of my flour. It would've been perfect to have this flour in there at the beginning, we'll make it work. Now, let's get this all stirred up. We want this to start simmering. Start reducing. The flour that I just put in may have just ruined this dish. The flour that I put in was not a good move. I should have put that flour in before, I should have recognized that I was gonna need more broth. At that point, before pouring in my wine, and my chicken stock, I should have put in more flour while making the roux because now I've got these nice little chunks in here. So I made a huge mistake. Do not add flour after you've added your white wine and your um, chicken stock because then all it does is ball up. So I've been standing here the entire time stirring this, hoping to God that I would be able to get all of the little bits of flour out of here and you can see that I haven't. So I'm mad at myself because I made chicken piccata probably a dozen times and I've never went back and added flour and as soon as I did it I knew gee Scott that's a rookie mistake. That's a big rookie mistake because when you add your flour over your butter to make a roux it doesn't ball up. It kind of cooks but once you've added the liquid flour tends to collect to itself. You know, it kind of wants to make a dough. I've got most of that out. What we're going to do now is we're going to add our capers. Get our capers stirred around here. Then, man, that, that gravy, the sauce came together real nice if it weren't for these little chunks there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my tongs here and I'm going to add my chicken back to the pan. When I do that, I'm just going to kind of Make sure I get it completely coated by that sauce. By adding this chicken, it's actually going to thicken my sauce a little bit more because there's probably a few excess pieces of flour on that chicken. The crust that we created also is on the chicken as well. That's going to add as kind of serve as another thickening agent. So what I'm going to do now is once I get all my chicken in, 
I'm going to bring this up to temperature, let it get it simmering, and I'm going to let it simmer for, oh, we'll say six minutes. Now, I will every now and then kind of adjust it. I just dropped that piece of chicken down in the grate. Thankfully, it was a, nice, it was a little one. Let's see if we can get it out. Bye-bye, Mr. Chicken. We'll put him right here. You got to sacrifice one every now and then. All right, so I'm going to let this simmer. We're going to get it up to temperature, get it simmering, and let it simmer for six minutes. Bring our temperature up here. I have plated up my chicken piccata. Don't make the same rookie mistake I made where I added flour afterwards. That was, I almost didn't finish the video because that is such a rookie mistake. Um, but I'm hungry, I'm gonna use that as, a, as an out that I'm starving and couldn't think and had about three glasses of wine. So I knew better. So let's give this a try, I can tell you. I've made this dish so many times. This is one that, in nor a lot of times when I cook, it's the first time that I've made that dish because I don't know if I'll make it again. Um, but this dish I've made so many times. Um, and I kept telling myself, hey, I need to record that. So let's see how we did. Mmm. Mmm, it's good. Mmm. It's really good. I, I, I just love the flavor that the white wine and the lemon and the capers the white wine's kind of a base. The lemon freshens, freshens it up, and that caper gives it that nice, briny snap. Mmm. So good. I'm so glad we made a bunch of that. It's just me and the wife here today. We got some little sides over there as well. Um, so I'm hungry. I want to have dinner with my lovely wife. But first, I want to thank you guys for watching really really appreciate it give me a shout out on social media uh we're on facebook uh twitter instagram google plus but most importantly click that subscribe button in youtube thank you for watching and ciao